The Jazz shocking the world with the best record in the NBA is in large part due to the breakout season from the 28-year-old off their bench, Jordan Clarkson, who's been the team's second leading scorer. So let's look at how good JC really is, how he's been the clear favorite for the Sixth Man of the Year award, and stay tuned to see the main reason Jordan is built to contribute to a championship contender. In early January of this year, the Jazz lost to the Knicks, which made them 4-4, four and four, with the bottom-feeding Timberwolves among the teams they'd taken L's to. But in their next game with a win over the Milwaukee Bucks, the Jazz caught fire and began an ongoing streak of winning 20 of 21 games. You know all-stars the Spider Donovan Mitchell and the Stifle Tower Rudy Gobert as the two backbones to Utah's success, which they undoubtedly are. However, the flamethrower Jordan Clarkson has been understatedly valuable and one of the driving forces behind why basketball fans in Salt Lake City are currently reliving their conference championship winning days in the late 90s. But if you were forced to describe the nine-year veteran backup guard in two words, they'd be shifty and tough. With an array of moves including ball fakes, euro steps, elusive spins, momentum behind the back dribbles, and perfectly timed stop and go hesitations, the speedy Filipino can manufacture offense from nothing. Clarkson's one of the fastest players across the NBA, which is at the top of the scouting report for whoever's matching up with him. Because of his speed, hang time, and polished finishing ability with either hand around the bucket, defenders are extremely concerned Jordan's going to attack the paint. In turn, that gives him all the space he needs to knock down jumpers from deep range at a very high rate. From three-point land, Clarkson's hitting a very solid 38.2% of his shots. Clarkson's right behind Donovan Mitchell in jazz scoring, averaging a career-best 18.2 points per game, but he's actually shot a higher percentage from the field overall than Donovan, and Jordan's player efficiency rating is nearly identical to D-Mitch, just slightly higher. Regardless of that, JC's doing this for the first seed in the Western Conference, which proves that the trade Utah made for him way back on December 23rd of 2019 was one of the biggest swindles in franchise history. Because with the Cleveland Cavaliers in tank mode, all the Utah Jazz had to give up for Jordan was Dante Exum and two second round picks. Little did they know that the former second rounder would turn into a sixth man of the year front runner who has everything to do with their team's new status as a legitimate title contender. This past offseason, the Jazz signed Clarkson to a four-year, $51.5 million deal, and he's more than living up to that contract. Recently, JC became the first player to score 40 points off the bench in under 30 minutes since it was done in 1991. In just 29 minutes in this game against the Sixers, he made 13 of his 20 field goals and a red-hot 8 of 13 three-pointers. Overall on the season, given his 18 plus point per game averages on 45% shooting from the field, which is contributing to the team with the league's best record, the question now becomes if Jay Clark will be an all-star. He certainly deserves it, and having three or more all-stars on one team isn't out of the ordinary in the NBA, as we've seen league-leading teams with multiple all-star selections in recent NBA history. During the 2017 all-star game, the Golden State Warriors, who had the best record in the league that season, had four all-star selections in Steph, KD, Thompson, and Draymond. I want in the 2015 all-star game, the Atlanta Hawks, the top team in the Eastern Conference, also had four all-star selections in Jeff Teague, Al Horford, Paul Millsap, and Kyle Korver. I'll get to my prediction for whether he'll make his first all-star appearance and the reason why he's the perfect fit for the Jazz, but before that, what Jazz coach Quinn Snyder recently said just goes to show that Clarkson is an excellent leader by example. After his 40-point game, Snyder said, quote, I think the mix that he has in his aggressiveness both from the three-point line and at the rim, we really talked a lot about his ability to shoot threes as opposed to settling for the mid-range when he's so good at the rim, and one of the things he's doing is when he does get into the paint, he's such a good finisher, but he's also got his eyes out and we want his eyes on the rim. But he's also been unbelievably unselfish. I believe in him and his teammates believe in him. He's confident to begin with, but I think that takes him to a really good place mentally. I just like the other things he's trying to do as well. I think the way that he's thrown himself into the game, you see him on the offensive glass, you see him trying to defend, and I think that helps him stay focused. He doesn't need to be too open to be aggressive and shoot the ball, and that's what we want. 
That's what his teammates want too, end quote. And the reason that this new electric breakout version of JC makes him the ideal fit for this Jazz roster is because of his experience. To begin his career, we'd seen how Clarkson could score at the NBA level during his Laker days when he peaked at 15.5 points per game for those teams that never won more than 26 games during their first three seasons. Then, you can't forget he went on to be a rotation player next to LeBron James in his final season in Cleveland. Given the other Jazz main shot creator, D. Mitch, is much younger than Clarkson, has a lot less experience, Clarkson's not going to be afraid to take the big shots in the playoffs. He has a ton of experience, and more importantly, he has a ton of experience playing in the biggest moments. So that should really help the mantra of this Jazz team. But when you look at the rest of the worthy candidates for the Sixth Man of the Year award, no one seems to be better than Jordan Clarkson thus far. Making decent cases for the award are Eric Gordon, Terrence Ross, Chris Boucher, Shake Milton, Montrez Harrell, and Lou Williams, but they're simply far behind Clarkson in the race for Sixth Man right now. In terms of whether or not Clarkson will be an all-star, Competing with Curry, Doncic, Lillard, not to mention his teammate D. Mitch, will likely be an impossibility. The nine-year pro out of Missouri will likely have to wait until another year to make his all-star debut, but he's still only 28. His time will come. That doesn't mean he can't lead Utah to a championship this year, though, or at least help lead Utah to a championship. But those are just my takes. Let me know yours down below, and subscribe to stay tuned for videos like this, as well as top tens. I post at least twice a week, so stay notified. And let's be friends. You can follow me on Instagram, at dflowhoops.